Let's get some analysis now. Joining me in the studio is Richie Merzian. He's Director of Climate and Energy at the Australia Institute. Richie, thanks for your time. What's First of all, if we start with the, the news in Andrea Crothers' report there about Penny Wong in, in the region, meeting with the Samoan Prime Minister, the Tongan leadership as well. Second trip in a week. It seems like it's been well received with uh, also the Fijian Prime Minister putting out some positive comments in recent days. Yeah, Is that your sense right. of it? Yeah, no, no, entirely. I mean, the Pacific have always been clear. Climate change is their number one priority in terms of security, in terms of that existential threat. And they've wanted a partner in Australia to share that concern. Already in the first week and a half, the foreign minister is showing that. She's going there and she doesn't have a particular agenda. She's listening. She's saying, we hear you. We want to be a partner on this. We're going to do everything we can domestically. We're increasing our target. We're increasing our aid. And we want to even host a UN meeting in partnership with you as well. Those are all really welcome comments along with everything else she's promising in terms of improving the relationship. I think it's off to a great start. John Connor, I spoke to from the Carbon Market Institute earlier in the day. He said that it's the finance side of things when it comes to dealing with small island nations and other developing countries that is going to increasingly be a focus of attention and potentially where the government could step up its, its contribution without causing any sort of political sensitivities. Yeah, look, Australia is not a major donor compared to the other OECD partners. It's only 0.2% of its gross national income. That's quite low at the bottom of the table. It wants to increase that. Last year, we had Prime Minister Matafa from Samoa on a webinar. And she said, we want Australia to be a greater partner in supporting, but also to rejoin the Green Climate Fund. So there's some simple things Australia could do, like, like rejoining this UN fund to start improving those relations without having to gear into its domestic efforts. And that would be a good first step. We still have to see if Australia is going to be rejoining this fund. And, and do you think, as a, a former diplomat yourself, do you think this push by the Albanese government will help hold the, the Chinese uh, influence at, at bay to an extent if they can start to build up that confidence and um, belief in Australia taking action? Look, it's early days, but there's good signs already. I mean, the reticence to sign up to this regional partnership that the Chinese foreign minister has been shopping about is a good sign. And then from there, we've seen the warm reception the foreign minister's received. She comes with her climate credentials as the first Australian climate minister. So it's definitely moving in the right direction. I think the Pacific would prefer to deal with Australia. It's just a question of how far Australia will go to generate that. On this current energy crisis, what's driving it, in your opinion? It's just gas. We know that gas prices just get higher and higher, and it's not a supply issue. Australia tripled its gas supply on the East Coast, and yet prices went up because we've exported all. We've successfully made gas prices more expensive whilst increasing supply. The, sh the short-term solution is going to be a tough one. Is it uh, gas reservation? Is that something we I should mean, look to in the short term? All options should be considered to, because the majority of Australia's gas goes overseas, and that's by design. And so, really, you should be looking at all mechanisms available to curb that export demand and bring it back at home, but the only serious medium-term, long-term solution is to get off gas. And what makes this the real kicker, the largest gas user in the manufacturing sector is the gas industry to liquefy and export the gas. So manufacturers are hurting, but the gas industry also uses up a huge chunk of that in manufacturing as well. So do you think the, the government is ambitious enough, the, the, the Albanese government, with its plan to have a greater share of the, the system provided by renewables by 2030. I think it's 80% by 2030 from memory. Yep. Look, that is definitely the right way to go. It's good to get, within eight years, a majority, you know, close to 100 of renewables. But we also need to electrify elsewhere. So we need to get people off gas as well. So you need incentives to get industry to electrify. You need incentives to get households off gas as well. So, yes, let's clean up our electricity sector, but let's also get people off gas as well so we're not in this position again because we can see this coming. Gas prices just go up. Richie Merzian, Energy and Climate Director at the Australia Institute, thank you for your time. My pleasure.